Welcome everyone and happy Mother's Day to those who are celebrating Mother's Day today. I'm Tara, a GNEM patient. And the reason we are recording this session today is because many patients uh, have requested that we record this session. They're very interested in what Shilpi has to say. Let's take a deep, deep breath and bring our attention to this present moment, which is very precious. I would like to extend heartfelt gratitude to Shilpi for her willingness to facilitate our huddle today. I've known Shilpi for more than 10 years and got to know how dedicated and determined she is to find ways not only to manage GNEM, but to help find a cure. Shilpi has traveled and studied in many countries while coping while coping with her GNEM challenges. She's an assistant professor at OP Jindal Global University in India and has received her PhD in law and economics from the Erasmus University in Rotterdam. She's also the co-founder and trustee of World Without GNE Myopathy, which is based in India a patient organization that supports people living with GNEM. Shilpi and her parents have organized GNEM conferences and patient days in India. Without much ado, I invite Shilpi to begin our discussion on an alternative approach to healing GNEM, her experience from a year of meditation. Shilpi? Thank you so much, Tara, and thank you for giving me this opportunity to share um, my experience, which um, is really a, a very precious opportunity for me. And as I was telling you, Tara, just please do jump in at any point um, and feel free to add. So I know that this is like a facilitation, so I shouldn't be speaking for too long. So Tara, if you think I'm speaking for too long, then just stop me at any point. Um, so, so what I want to talk to you today um, is about, so we all know that um, healing, so the traditional model of healing is uh, what we call the matter to matter uh, form of healing, where you take medicines or you uh, have a good diet or you um, uh, do your exercises, etc. you take supplements, etc. And uh, you he and that's matter to matter because you're trying to heal yourself by um, you know uh, by sort of either introducing new matter or changing the matter within sort of your own biology and you're changing your biology through your matter. And um, there is another way, another potential way of healing, which is mind over matter, where sort of the idea is that. Um, uh, that uh, since a lot of our biology is actually sort of comprised of energy rather than matter, we can change our energy by changing how we think and how we feel and how we act. And that can change our biology, which is our matter. And, and that's basically what I want to talk to you about today very, very briefly. Um, but just to give you some background as to how I got here. So uh, as Tara mentioned, um, so both my parents are scientists. And I'm not really a very religious person. I still don't think I'm a, a, a religious person. My parents are not. Uh, and I'm, I also don't think I'm a very spiritual person. So a lot of what I'm going to say is kind of also uh, new to me. And I'm also um, kind of trying to understand some of this. But uh, I'm here talking to you about it today because I really feel that it works. And I, it has really helped me. And I'll talk about how it's helped me. Um, but so basically, how did I come to this work, right? So uh, as Tara mentioned, uh, we started World Without GNE Myopathy and we worked with Tara and Mona and others as well before that, uh, because we all believed that we needed to be part of the change, um, that we had to sort of be facilitators of the change that we wanted to see. And that was something that I always felt that just sitting and waiting for a medicine to come somehow did not kind of agree with me uh, because when I was diagnosed yeah we, I, I was told you know the ultragenic trials are going on sialic acid will come and then when that didn't happen I realized that 
you know, we had to really sort of take charge of the situation ourselves. And my parents being scientists, we were quite uniquely placed to start World Without GNA Myopathy. Um, but so the idea of sort of being able, being able to do something about this condition was something that I always deeply felt. And um, ar around the time that COVID started, that was um, in 2000, that was in 2020 or uh, Jan, Feb. Um, so I was diagnosed in 2009. I've had, um, I've had symptoms since 2000. Five, six. But uh, my so around the time that COVID happened, my arms started to get weaker. So um, I realized that I would probably start start needing help to get dressed uh, and to maybe like, uh, you know, just do do basic things. And that was something that really troubled me. I couldn't kind of come to terms with that. Uh, and that was at that at that time I was living on my own a few days every week for work and I I started feeling that it's not going to be possible for me to live on my own because I was very scared that I was going to you know they were, that if the, that if I fell while I was alone in my home there would be no one to pick me up and how would I manage it wasn't safe uh, I would need a 24-hour helper I would be dependent and I was just going on this like really deep downward spiral mentally and uh, and I think lockdown just came at the right time to save me because I was just like thinking, analyzing, like just so many thoughts, so much of fear. And it was around this time that I also got uh, promoted to a full professor of law. And that was like, a, should have been like a wonderful moment in my life. But instead of being like thrilled and excited about it, I was sort of having doubts about whether I really deserve this promotion or not, whether it was too early. And even that was like a, like just a feeling of like self-doubt in me. And, and when I felt that self-doubt, I realized that like I had to sit up and like take note of what like I was thinking and what I was feeling because it didn't make sense for me to have all these like negative feelings around something that was such a happy moment. Like, you know, I'm disabled. And I'm still getting promoted ahead of everyone else. And this is like so nice. And I should, regardless of everything else, I should still celebrate that moment because I have such few moments to celebrate. So, um, so you know, when I was on that down, downward spiral, I realized that, uh, you know, this was not where I wanted my life to go. And, um, and I would not let, and I took a very, very firm decision in my mind that I would not let my hands, my arms get any weaker uh, than they had already gotten, and I would do every single thing that I that I could do to uh, to to change the situation that I that I was in at that point. So that's kind of what brought me to this work. So that before that had happened, a friend of mine had uh, told me about how she had healed her, herself from a debil debilitating autoimmune condition where she was bedridden, bedridden for a very very long time. Uh, using these meditations and she told me to check out this guy called Dr. Joe Dispenza and she said that it really helped her and at first like I shrugged it off saying that oh you know GNE is a genetic condition and hers is autoimmune and there's really nothing much that can be done about a genetic condition because it's genetic etc but at the point when I was like that really low point in my life I realized that you know I had to sit up and do something and that's when I decided that I would like look up this meditation that this person that she was telling me about, Dr. Joe Dispenza. Uh, he had healed himself from a spinal cord injury using these techniques that he teaches. And um, his philosophy was that, you know, um, you can heal yourself through the power of your mind, right? It is scientifically proven that you can, uh, that you can heal yourself by thought alone. And um, rather than looking for something outside, like why is gene therapy not coming? Why is mana taking so long, et cetera, et cetera. It really resonated with me at that time that I could do something to heal myself. And I didn't have to wait or look around for something outside of me uh, to heal myself. And also that, that by changing how I was thinking and how I was feeling, 
I could uh, uh, live a completely different life and it was totally in my control to change how I was thinking, how I was feeling, right? So all of these feelings of fear, of anxiety, of like, how will I live, et cetera, et cetera, were thoughts that I could change. And that, that was something that really resonated with me. And, um, and, and basically that's what um, uh, brought me to this work. And then sort of having come to this work, the way that I rationalize it, I'm not, a scientist but the way that I rationalize it is that you know we know that people with GNE who have the same mutations progress differently and that there's a lot about how sort of um, uh, you know the genes kind of work in our body and there might be a lot of other factors that lead to sort of different gen genetic expression in our body so uh, if we change sort of um, uh, uh, the internal biology of our body by just changing how we're thinking and how we're feeling. Maybe we can change the genetic expression and maybe that can help to, uh, um, to heal ourselves from GNE. So that's basically um, um, how I rationalize it. But so initially when I approached this work, I kind of wanted to know if people had healed themselves from uh, genetic conditions doing Dr. Joe's work or whether there were any muscular dystrophies that had healed. But having done this work for more than a year now, I know that, you know, uh, and this is what he also says that, you know, um, uh, when you're really immersed in this work, then you don't look for a healing outside of you because you already feel so wonderful, but it doesn't really make such a big difference. And of course, it matters whether you're healed or not, but you don't feel the need to, to do this work for your healing because you're just feeling so wonderful doing the work and your life is so wonderful on a daily basis that, um, that uh, you know, that's enough in itself. So I'll say briefly as to how this has impacted me, how doing this work has impacted me. And I'm not trying to promote Dr. Joe Dispenza, but he's the person that his kind of, work has resonated with me I'm following his meditation so I'm talking about him because he's the person that I follow but there are a lot of people out there uh, and Tara can also speak to this who to, who have similar sort of philosophies and similar sort of ideas of how you can heal yourself and and you know uh, you can I'm sure many of you are already doing this work and you can follow any of these people who talk about like healing uh, as mind over matter rather than matter over matter um, but, but his, Dr. Joe's meditations are really, really nice and easy to follow. So, um, so in, and he also, uh, works on like making the concepts, uh, behind this work really accessible and easy to understand and kind of under, uh, you know, people from different back, backgrounds can kind of relate to it. So I do his meditations almost every single day and I do them like now. Um, maybe like an hour, or an hour and a half. Um, there, there's maybe like one day in a week that I sometimes skip, but I try to be regular. And I also read uh, some of his books. So I've read um, Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself and Becoming Supernatural. And I've done an online workshop of his. And what I can say from doing this work is that, um, you know, my, my arms are still strong. Um, so the, they're stronger than how, what they were two years ago. So two years ago, I was really struggling to like, even like flat my hair like this, which I can do very easily now. And, um, and I've also tested this with like a 1.5 kg weight. Uh, and I can now lift a 1.5 kg weight like this much easier than I could do earlier. And, uh, my progression is not there in these two years. I haven't, really, since I started doing this work, I haven't progressed. And in fact, I can feel in, um, maybe not in like, I haven't like, I'm not like walking without a walker, but when I do my exercises and my yoga, I can, I can, I can do many more asanas now, um, than I could do earlier. Like where say I needed to hold on to something. Now I can do it without holding on to something. So there's just like an improvement in the right direction, which means that I'm actually like, not only am I not progressing, but I'm actually gaining strength. And, and I have never felt this way in the 15 odd years I've had GNE. I've done so many things and I've never felt that I could, um, you know, gain strength from something that I did. I've never felt that. 
and now I feel that. So, and I'm seeing that in my like you know everyday life. So I'm I'm back to living on my own, and I don't feel any fear. Um, I'm managing really well. Um, yeah, I feel excited about living on my own. All the negative thoughts I had, like oh my god, everyone else's lives are so good. Why is my life so bad? And all of that downward spiral has gone. Like I don't have, I don't. I just wonder where it's gone. It's just gone. Um, and um, and I feel and I feel just I feel awesome. So mentally, emotionally, and physically, I I think it has really impacted me for the better. So so um, that's basically like, and I can tell you more about it if you have questions sort of later on. And I've also had some really profound, uh, you know, mystical experiences during meditation, where I have felt like such joy and love and you know this you know no need to take any alcohol because I the meditations give you like the biggest high that you at least I have never smoked so I don't know what smoking up is like but uh the meditations you know they they just create a buzz and I also have like these profound insights that I get in these meditations about how I can be limitless and I can do anything that I want to do and and those insights really stick with me. And now, you know, that changes how I think about things. Like, even though it might be outwardly still difficult for me to do things, I don't feel it that way because I don't think of it that way. So everything, everything's changed. And it's, it's just really amazing. So, so Shilpi, uh, yeah. Shilpi, excuse me, Rushab had his hands up. Um, I don't know if... I should interrupt you or have you answered a question? Sure. Rusham? Oh, I just clapped actually. It was not uh, it was not a hand raised. Oh, okay, sorry. I <laughs> Okay. Um it, it it was just a clapping uh, emoji. Oh. Okay, well, we're we're applauding you, Shilpi. You could go on. I, Sorry about that. No. Um. So, just talking about some of the uh, some of the philosophy and why meditation, why meditation, right? So, some of the philosophy uh, that initially, like, obviously, I'm not like a, I don't fully understand all of this philosophy, but I'll just explain some of it because. Um, if any of you are new to this and might be interested in learning more, you can read uh, more about this. So what drew me to this was uh, the idea that when we live in survival, meaning that when we're living, anticipating the worst outcomes, when we're um, living, when we're in survival, it means that we're living just to survive, right? But for in, so survival is when sort of uh, in, in the prehistoric days when sort of there was uh, a danger out there and all our senses would kind of prick up to that danger and we would go into a different mode. And, uh, and I felt like I was living in that mode because I was constantly anticipating the worst outcomes. How will I manage in this terrible situation? How will I manage in that terrible situation? And, and uh, I realized I was in that mode and, and overly analytical, overly thinking about the worst possible things. And, and, and when you, I don't know if any of you feel like that, but when I felt like that, I realized that that was really taking away from my body's ability to heal itself. So, so and Dr. Joe talked about this in his, uh, so it, that resonated with me. So he said, if you want to heal yourself, you have to move away from living in survival to living in creation. And creation means obviously creating your own healing. And when you're living in creation, you feel love, you feel gratitude, you feel joy, you feel, um, uh, you know, just uh, elated to be alive. And these are the emotions in which our body thrives and it can heal because it's not waiting for, a, for to, to deal with some like dangerous situation, but it's feeling safe and it's feeling like, okay, now we, we can switch off from the outside world, outside world, we can move inside and we can heal what's going on inside. So that was something that really resonated with me that, you know, being in the emotional states of, of creation allows your body to heal. And, um, and what he says is that you don't have to wait for something outside of you to feel that way, because uh, according to him, there are two ways of being. One is the Newtonian way and the other is the quantum way. 
in the newtonian way you know you wait for your healing to happen to feel the emotions of your healing but according to the quantum model uh, you create your own healing so before the your healing has occurred if you start feeling the emotions of your healing then your body is so objective that it will eventually sort of not know the difference between what you're genuinely feeling inside you and what's actually happened in the outside world and it's going to move towards those genuine feelings so your 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 internal chemistry will change to reflect how you're feeling and who you're being so according to him um you know if you can feel the feelings of your healing uh, before that healing has occurred then you can uh, slowly move towards that healing and of course that's a very very difficult thing to do and i struggled with that a lot initially and i still struggle with that uh, and i realized how much there was like a lack of sense of self worth within me that i didn't even i couldn't even feel how it would feel to be healed from gnm like for a very very long time so um uh, and like even now i think i'm that's what I, i'm really working towards because there's so many layers to feel that there's so much going on uh uh in terms of sort of how i feel about my uh, about gne and having it and my life with it etc so um uh and and so that was also an interest so that that was also an interesting aspect of this of this work um so uh, so and now sort of you know i i have these really really beautiful visions where um so he has these meditations which are walking meditations which i do with my walker and i walk and i imagine myself like um you know cuz i i always i love traveling and being an academic you know we can we get to travel a lot for like uh, academic positions and stuff and i really want to travel like i want to do like uh, you know post doc i want to do, i'm too old for post doc now but i want to do like these uh, fellowships and you know living in different parts of the world and i imagine myself living in italy or living near the beach and just walking around and it just feels so liberating to 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 imagine that and to really feel those emotions and um it's 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 really wonderful so um the other thing uh that he uh, um uh talks about is um sort of being in the present moment versus living according to what we know to be uh, our truth which is what is uh, which is the familiar past or the predictable future so the familiar past is everything that has got us here and the predictable future is all our daily everyday lives um that we anticipate right uh, and in order to heal he says you have to be in the present moment which means you have to be open to the unknown right you have to forget about everything that you know that connects you to this world um you know your body your environment and time like forget about everything uh and just move into a state of uh being in like a void uh and just and enjoy being in that space and if you can be in that space and you can create a life for yourself from that space because if you want to heal yourself you have to according to him i'm i'm saying what he says uh you have to if you want to heal your body you first have to become no body that's what he says right so um so so being no body means completely disconnecting and moving beyond your body and that also means that your feelings about yourself are disconnected from what your body actually uh, is doing in the everyday so even though say you can see that you're not that you know you're uh it's hard for 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 me to walk or it's hard for me to uh do something my feelings are are disconnected from that that space that time and that body and and if you can do that like regularly then uh eventually you know the the uh, uh the healing will happen that's what he says so uh and the last concept that i thought was interesting was the heart and brain coherence so he says that in order to heal the formula there's a formula according to him he has like a formula course i haven't done the formula course but he said but basically the concept is achieving heart and brain coherence which means that your heart rate is is at really the perfect level where it is conducive towards healing and your brain waves are slower and you're open 
your heart is open and i know what it means now for my heart for the heart to be open because i've experienced that and it's just complete love complete bliss uh you know just ecstasy and and when that happens then your then the brain also uh, automatically starts to get coherent and i know this because you know i've seen the lights in my brain go go on right like the room is completely dark i've got an eye patch but there are so many lights like i can see like really strong lights and that's like just by you know feeling this love in my heart so when that happens he says that that is like the key to uh, to achieving healing so um so those are basically like some of the concepts i wanted to talk about and in terms of uh, uh doing the meditations like what are his meditations about so he has a number of different meditations and the idea of the meditations are that you you have to kind of stop the chatter uh, of your everyday life and the chatter of your brain and become super conscious about who you're being and what thoughts are coming into your mind and you know your reactions to your everyday environment your reactions to your bo- your body what you say to yourself what is your internal dialogue with your body and for me the meditations were a way to get there because i was so disconnected from my body and from my mind and from my um from from myself that like the meditations really helped me to get there and you know just to you know change the way i'm thinking and change the way i'm feeling so the meditations are useful because they help you to disconnect and then he kind of teaches you how to feel those feelings once you've disconnected then the next step in the meditation is to feel the feelings that you want to feel uh, the feelings of your healing the feelings of being healthy the whatever the feelings are that you want to feel and and once you're disconnected once your brain waves are slow and once your heart is open it's easy to feel that and when you feel that then the logic is that your healing will come from there so he has a number of different meditations and um, you know if you have questions about them i would be happy to discuss them and then the last thing that i just want to say is that of course it's hard to to do this work every day because you know it's not a linear process there are days when i just don't feel like and then when i started this work and then i had covid and that was like a big setback you know i i really got very weak after covid and then i got myself back together and you know uh you know started all the work again but you know i had to take a break for a month i just couldn't do the meditation um so i keep so i so he in in his book becoming supernaturally talk he um talks about making your own mind movie about like what you want to achieve uh with images and with music and with affirmations and i made my own mind movie with like all the yoga poses that i wanted to do and with my favorite song and um you know affirmations and whenever i'm feeling like i don't have enough motivation to do this work then i then i watch my mind movie and it really makes me excited and the, the really interesting thing about the mind movie is that now i can do a lot quite a few of those yoga poses almost to the point where they are in that mind movie so i can actually i'm get, getting better at doing those some of those yoga poses that are in the mind movie so that's also kind of uh, interesting and i'm ha- i'm happy uh, i told tara that i have the mind movie if you guys are interested in watching it i can show you a clip of it later on but i think i'm going to stop now and happy to talk about all of this with you guys more so any does anyone have questions uh, uh one question here so should be are you taking like personal sessions with the um, with the doctor for meditation or is it normal youtube videos or something that yeah, you are so connecting he has a website um which i can put in the chat box for you and he, you can buy his meditations from the website um he also has some online courses that you can buy from the website and um so i he has some of his meditations are on youtube as well um but i bought them from the website but you can also check them out on youtube and he has like some beginner like he has some nice like easy uh meditations like uh a self love meditation for women uh and a a, a general love meditation co- called go love 20 which is also really nice and i felt like the 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 learning to love yourself is one of the most important uh aspects of healing um so those are also good but 
uh, he also does these uh, workshops like um, these events which you can check out on his website uh, which are mostly in the US uh, since I'm not in the US I haven't been able to attend any of them but I've heard that they've been a lot like those those events are absolutely magnificent is what I've heard okay yeah there was one in San Diego recently it's it's really hard to get a ticket to go to his uh, retreats it's it's filled up way in advance. So a lot of, so, I mean, I haven't been to any, but like I, the work has still resonated with me. So I think uh, one can start doing the work. Uh, and uh, then when you get, when you are able to go, then you can go. But yeah, I think going is really nice. And I mean, it might be a little bit hard, you know, where to start. So I think you just have to jump in and start from somewhere. Like I started from the uh, online workshop that I did. And he has now like this workshop called The Formula, where he explains the formula to heal. Um, so, um, um, so I think that might also be a, a good place to start. You know, and I've found, I've had some experiences, similar experiences like what you're talking about, Shilpi. And in a way, I, it's like, we don't have the words to explain the feelings and the experiences you go through when you're experiencing this altered state. It's like, the way I can experience it, it was like, as Shilpi was saying, being high. I don't know what being high is. I haven't been on, on drugs, but I have run. I've run and done a lot of athletic work. So I know I've had those runners high. And so I can um, equate it to like having a runner's high and being, being in this space of just joy. And it, it just opens up intense, um, I don't know, my, my, my visual acuity was so intense. I see things in a different light. There was so much peace and joy. And there were times like the brain go, like my brain goes somewhere else and it's touching bases with, um, with, with, thought patterns and knowledge. And, you know, I thought I was going crazy at one point with that. Like I was accessing data. It's almost like speeding through space and accessing data that I can't explain the, the experience, but that's what it is for, it was for me. That sounds amazing. That sounds really amazing. And I mean, it's also hard to meditate, right? Like to completely not think about anything. I still struggle. I struggle with that every day when I meditate. There's always like thoughts that pop up. And then some people say you pay attention to why you're thinking that thought when you're meditating. And that also is important because um, a lot of it is about like removing um who you're being in this in this moment and I mean changing who you're being in this moment because if you can change who you're being then maybe you can change who you uh, you know your body right so um for that you have to change you have to know what you're thinking and what you have been thinking um and 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 then change those thoughts um so yeah but yeah, I won't say meditation is easy, but like the, the thing is that it can actually really help and we don't have anything else I, that I know of that can, that at least has helped me as much as this, this thing. So like, it's really powerful. Yeah, and you know, when you first start meditating, you'll find that your, 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 your thoughts are gonna have this shopping list of things that you have to do and all the stuff you have to do throughout the day. But with practice, it gets better and better. And you're gonna start feeling the gaps between your thoughts. 
And those gaps, those silences between your thoughts, that's where the power lies. So you I've can- had, I've had moments when I've not been doing anything, Tara, and suddenly like uh, um, the tears just keep streaming down my eyes and I don't know why. And it's just like, you know, and then after that, I feel so like my, I feel so light. I feel like I'm a new person. Like it's, I don't, it's, yeah, it just opens you up in a very, very different way. Yeah. Like I think, um, and because it, like you meditate and then you think it's done, but actually, you know, your body kind of reflects, integrates that slowly, slowly, I feel. And over time, if you keep doing it, then, so I, like, I, I, of late, I've had like a lot of crying meditations where I don't know where, why the tears are coming or from where, but I feel like something is being released uh, that needed to be released um, for me to feel this joy and this lightness that I feel right now. And it's happening in a way that's best for me in the way that I can handle it, which is what sort of he says that your healing will come in a way that is best for you. So um yeah, it sounds, yeah. Sometimes I feel like, yeah, it does sound weird, but it's actually absolutely, like, I feel like it's spot on. Yeah, and through that, those cathartic moments, those moments when you're having tears <clears throat> and you're crying and you're healing yourself, you're opening up your energetic field. We all have these energetic field. You're opening that up. You're healing it. You're opening it up for healing to enter. So it's good to have a good cry. I mean, if any of you have had a good cry, you know how you feel better afterwards. So that's good too. I don't. I don't know if this has just been like. I know it's a bit hard to relate to, like, um, inter because it's just so different from what we're generally used to, right, Sara? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. you know, it's a different language. We're speaking a totally different language. In order to heal the body, it's a, it's a totally like a foreign language to, to human beings who are so analytical and verbal. It's you have to change the way you think. If you're getting the same um, results every day and, and you don't like what you're getting, you totally have to change the way you're thinking. And with, with our disease, we tend to catastrophize. Oh, what's going to happen to us? You know, blah, blah, blah. It can get weaker, you know. <clears throat> if we could bring ourselves in the present moment and ask ourselves, what is the problem right now? If you're able to answer that question, not think what tomorrow is gonna to be or what happened to you yesterday, just the present moment, that's where it starts. Because there's never no, no tomorrow when you're living today, right now. And there, there's no future when you're living right now. And it's right now where you're living, where you're alive, you're, you're present now. And you're always present now. So when, when you're able to refocus the mind into the present moment, you can start to bring in healing. I have a question. Hi, thanks for that, Shilpi um, and Tara. So we're very new to this. I am anyway, I don't know about everybody else, but it sounds amazing and really re-energizing. So where should we start? I can see there's a book. I can see there's lots of webinar sessions available on the YouTube and there's you know different price ranges. So this is an investment that some of us will have to make. It's not you know, a free YouTube video or anything like that. Where do we start? Where would you say is the best place to start? I would say I, I started with the uh, workshop, um, but if you, uh, um, you can start with 
with reading the book and there, he also ha- like there are also like audio versions of the books you don't also have to you can just buy the audio version but also like there's a lot that Joe Dispenza just says uh, that's available online on YouTube so just also just listen to what he's saying and see if it resonates with you just google uh, or youtube joe dispenza and there'll be like so many uh, things that he says that come up i was like eager to jump into the meditations but i think i started too early so i started with you are the placebo he has like a lot of meditations i started with you are the placebo and then i realized i had no clue what he was saying in the meditation why was he saying this and you know what i had to do and then i realized i had to take like five steps back and understand the concepts before i could start um but i i would say just the use up the free resources first right so there's a lot of like stuff on youtube just saying uh, and also he has like a a, a channel uh, where there are testimonies of people who um uh, heal themselves and um, those are also very inspiring because there's so many of them like so many that it doesn't seem like um it doesn't seem like just hocus pocus focus people are actually doing this um so those those are also good like just to see like how other like what other people have to say about it um but there's a lot of resources and i'll i'll just uh, send you the link to his website as well yeah thank you i, th- I think i'm I, personally i'm I, I don't need to watch lots of testimonials because just listening to you and and tara you know i i know that there's some power in mind over matter I get that that's what I, how I live day to day you know I don't waste my energy on worrying on what I don't know yet you know that's something my husband made very clear to me when we first got the diagnosis you know when we I was in tears how am I going to deal with this you know what's going to happen in the future and he said very simply you know what's the point of wasting time thinking about that let's focus on now let's focus on what we can do right now and that's what I t- tell my GNEMers you know Let's focus on what we can do right now. Let's not go there yet because we're all different. We're all going to progress. I don't even like that word, but we're all going to get weaker differently. But this sounds like by doing what you're saying, um, by by saying um, what you've done, it sounds like we can progress, you know, mentally, which will ultimately help us physically. So um, I'm in, you know, I'm in, I just want to be, I just like to know straight away, what do I need to do? You know, I want to cut to the chase and like, what can I be doing? So I think that's a lot of what the other patients may be thinking as well. So, but correct me if I'm wrong, the rest of you, you know, if there's anything you can put in the chat or we can send out to people afterwards, just to avoid us surfing the net for loads and loads of different things, that would be really helpful. So I would still I mean, he basically says the same thing in all his videos. So I think just check out maybe a few of his videos. They're all basically saying the same thing about his philosophy. And I, I would say either buy the book as a place to start or get the, which is the cheap option, or get the formula course. Um, the courses are very well worth the while. Um, uh, the way I looked at it, because I went in like just based on what my friend was saying and I didn't even fully believe her, but I just wanted to do something. So it was a big investment for me too. But I said, okay, if gene therapy comes, that's going to be like a million, million times more expensive. And I have, I want to do something now. So for me, um, like investing at least in that course and with that course, you get some meditations. And also guys, I can send you my meditations. Um, So you guys don't have to buy them because uh, i have i bought them so um you know for those who can't afford them i can send them and also like a lot of the meditations are, are online even though that's like uh you know technically like against copyright but they're there so but you need to understand the philosophy behind them sure. for which you should do the course i think the formula is the course that i would recommend i haven't done it but everyone says that is that's a newer course which he just launched more recently so i haven't done that one um which may be, I think, the place to start. Uh, but reading, breaking the habit of being yourself, I would say, is maybe a better place to start. Thank you. And, and obviously, like, if you, like, have any questions or, or need any meditations that I have, like, at any time, I know this is being recorded and I shouldn't say this, but um, just feel free to... To reach out to me 
um, I'm happy, like in whatever way, and I'm sure Tara will, will be able to help you much better with understanding the concepts. Um, but we can also do like, um, you know, they ha there are a lot of Joe Dispenza groups also like uh, on Facebook and they've been really helpful for me to understand concepts like what it does it mean to love yourself? What does it mean to be in the void? So I, in one of my meditations, like the voice came to me and it said, you know, you're scared of the void. Like you have a lot of fear in you. And I do have like a lot of control issues. Like, you know, I've never like liked to do anything that I wasn't sure of the outcome. So the unknown, but you have to step into the unknown and do things that you do not know what the outcome will be. And you do not know where this will go, but you have to have faith. And I've never had faith, but now I'm having faith um, through these meditations. So we can also, what I, what I was trying to say was that we can also do like, um, you know, uh, groups where we like do like a reading group or something uh, where we talk about his work, if people are interested, where we talk about, okay, what does he mean when he says this or that, some th things of that. So there are a lot of also other groups online if, uh, for like these kind of things where they where they discuss his work and what it means because uh, everyone finds it hard to understand it's um kind of alien concepts so a lot of people have like these uh keeping ourselves you know, motivated or i don't know what they call those groups where they're like uh, you know make sure that we're doing the meditations every day like what are those groups? i don't know what they're called but they're like a lot of people who do these things together as well Chilpi, are you suggesting we have a reading group? I'm saying we could. Um, oh, that sounds like a good idea. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like a great idea. We could um, put it in our um, the the Facebook group and ask, you know. Yeah, I was supposed to do like um, a review of breaking the habit of being yourself. I never got around to doing it, so. That's also the thing because doing the meditations itself takes a lot of time, as Sean says. You do have to invest time. Like there is no way around that. And um, one thing that Joe says, Dr. Joe says about this is that um, if you are like hesitating, which is very normal in terms of investing time, um, you need to ask yourself why. Like, um, is if your healing is important to you, which I think it's important for to all of us, uh, what's, why would we not, at least this made sense to me, why would I not do every single thing I can to achieve it if I believe that I can? So, and that's what motivates me to like do that one and a half hours of meditation every day because I really feel that every time I do that, it brings me closer to a healing. Um, and I don't see anything else right now that's, that's doing that for me and 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 you know this is something I owe to myself so you know this year I'm turning 40 and I told myself that this is this is my year to do meditation so I'm gonna do this for myself because I owe this to myself um and prioritize that over everything else so uh you know during sort of new year's eve like that was my resolution like I sat and I meditated at around 12 and I was like I'm going to like use this year and not give myself any excuse not gonna give myself any sort of and I'm just gonna see where this takes me because it's like a journey right we don't know where it will go but that doesn't mean that we don't try um but I can I can promise you that it's an exciting journey at least for me it has been like I've had all kinds of experiences I never thought I would um my parents think I've gone mad um <laughs> And, um, but, but they see the changes in me. So actually like this, and a lot of people are telling me, you're looking really great. And I'm like, the only thing I'm doing is, is the meditation. Um, so, um, so just to say that like this, for me, it was like this one, at least this one year, but I think I'm going to do this for a much longer time. I want to invest and do this for myself and see where it goes. And, and it is an investment um, because you might have to say no to a lot of other things to do this uh, because it's not just doing the meditations, it's also understanding and um, 
and reading, et cetera, et cetera. And the more time you invest, the more results you get. Um, so it is a mm. lot of work, but at the end of the day, isn't it worth it if you can, if you can become stronger and more independent? Like, like I never thought, I actually, my feeling was when lockdown happened and, and I left from my workplace that I, two years down the line, I would not, um, I would not be able to live on my own and and i'm doing it and i'm it's, it's just a testament to the meditation for your friends wow that's amazing Sh shilpi there is a question in the chat box can you see it or should i read it was it sean's question yeah so i thought that's what i was kind of addressing to say oh, okay. that uh Shilpi, i have a question yeah so like um like is anybody in the group like exercising or swimming or doing some physiotherapy for strengthening at least the muscles which are working like really well yeah i feel you have to continue you have to do that like without that there's no way that you can become stronger um and i've also tried some other techniques like visualization so that i think really helped me as well um but yeah i think you have to do you have to do your exercises regularly if you want your muscles to uh to stay the same strength or get stronger like there's no other way around it um yeah i'm i'm exercising three times a week i i do um water therapy and i do some weight lifting okay so tara it has affected just your upper limbs or lower limbs as well both upper and okay. lower same like i i feel difference in my movement like this this is easy but this is tough so like my muscles they work uh, very well in one direction and in other direction they are like very weak yeah the same thing with the legs right yeah 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 it, it's it's uh, similar patterns for most of us yeah I think yeah. stretching is really important as well. You know, it's hard for us to do our own stretches. So if you can find somebody to help you with that, but somebody who isn't going to damage you, you know, make sure you get a professional to train somebody first. So I had a physiotherapist who trained up uh, my carers and they now regularly give me some stretches at least once a week. I would like it more, but unfortunately everybody's really busy. But if I don't have those stretches, then I'm in pain. Um, and the other ways that I reduce pain is to go to the pool. Like Tara, I have um, some water, exercise in the water, but only once a week because I'm working four days and I just haven't got enough time or carers to take me the days that I'm off. Um, and the other thing I would suggest is things like heat packs or cold compresses, rather than I'm not saying don't take painkillers if you have to take them, but in the Western world, I know that everybody here, the, the first thing a doctor will do is give you a prescription for painkillers. That's the first thing my GP did to me. And I took one and I felt so disengaged. And they actually were for anti, they were antidepressants, but they were used for painkillers, but for, for killing pain. And I thought, I don't wanna do this. I wanna be in control of my body and my situation. Just like she'll be, I'm a bit of a control freak as well. Sorry, I, I wanna know. You know, I want to take control of my life and how it, how I go, how I, my journey with this is, is going to go and progress. So I use things like, you know, heat packs, stretching, walking as much as I can, um, getting out, just trying to go out as much as get some fresh air, um, talking to people, letting, getting the help, take as much help as you can, you know, don't feel like I shouldn't ask anybody, you know, once you, your mindset has changed off that stigma, that can help as well. But um, yeah, I think there's lots of little things we can do to, to keep on moving forward, but there are gonna be days where you're gonna feel like this is hard, this is tough, you know. Yes, have I totally agree. Have those days, have those, don't let it last though, try and move forward is, is the way. Speak to somebody, you know, speak to one of us. We, we're here, you know, it's, it's, so, it's so crucial that we just focus on what we can do and what's, what solutions are in place because there's so many solutions nowadays. 
So yeah, yeah, those are the kinds of things I try and do. But yeah, we all have days where it's not great. Yes, I know. Initially, like when I didn't know that I had this problem, I used to do everything on my own. And suddenly in the evening, I used to fall sometime or become very weak, like about to fall or something. Then I got to, now I stop. Once I'm tired, I stop, I go rest. And then I start again, not without rest. <laughs> and I 100% agree with the mind over matter theory because like some days ago, I, I used to feel very refreshing. So I used to take my son to the park. Like it's just downstairs. I hardly have to walk 100 steps or something. Lift him and I used to play with him in the park. But uh, after being diagnosed, I, I was a little bit scared. So nowadays I don't take him. But I know now I can take him from tomorrow. It's okay. <laughs> nice. Yeah. And I'm definitely going to try meditation. In India, there's one more thing. Uh, art of living. I think everybody must have heard of it. It's similar sort of. Like I did some workshop when I was like maybe 10, 15 years ago. But I think it's similar something. Yes, she'll, you know, as she'll be mentioned, there are many of um, this kind of programs and approaches and it's what resonates to the individual person right yeah yeah there are a lot of approaches art of living is a great one i think maybe if rushab is on he's tried it so maybe he can talk i've i've never been in uh, into like any of these things until like because somehow nothing resonated with me as much as as this work did because uh just the way that he designed his meditations and connected them to the concepts that he has saying us, you know, why doing the meditation can help in this way. And that really resonated with me. So that's why, like, I started doing this work. Um, and also that he had healed himself and all the people, all the other people who, who talk about how, and he teaches it so well. He's like a very good teacher. So as a teacher, I kind of really look after him. Like, this is how one has to be a teacher. Um, but um but yeah there are a lot of other a lot of and i also tried a few others before i came to him but i just wasn't it wasn't it wasn't fitting with me until like uh you know you need to find but a lot of people i know do his work along with other things so they don't just do his work they do other things as well um so you can mix and match you can try different things you can try different kinds of meditations you can just maybe even just practice mindfulness becoming conscious um and you know us indians like this is like our philosophy so um it's i think there are a lot of different philosophical traditions that are very similar to this work in india as well so um i think whatever works like there's so many different uh, indian gurus out there uh, sadhus etc who really like explain some of these concepts very well Yeah, for me, I listen a lot to Eckhart Tolle, and he comes more from a Buddhist standpoint. And um, he resonates with me, along with uh, jo Joe Dispenza and some other teachers. Um, so it, it's, it's finding what resonates with you and where you could find the peace, where you could slow your mind down. Aware also at the same time, be aware of all of us. We have conditioned mind, as they call it. Our minds are so conditioned over the years of everyone telling us what to do from the time we we're born. And we have to break some of those habits. We have to, you know, get some of those thought patterns out. What our elders may have told us, our teachers, whatever. And, and we are not consciously aware that all that's been built up in our thought patterns, the way we 
think, the way we react, the way we live our daily life. So when you start doing this here, as you start doing the, a meditation, you're going to start finding that you're going to gradually, those things are going to come up and you're going to be able to, to heal them or deal with them or, you know, file them away so they don't come up again. All the, um, the, the, the habits that the, they don't work for you anymore. So you're going to bring that up to the conscious self and heal them that's not working for you. That's exactly what breaking the habit of being yourself is about. Um, mm -hmm. Is about, it's exactly, you summarized it so well, Tara. That's exactly what that book is about. Um, why you need to break the habit of being yourself to heal and what that means. Um, Simona's leaving us. Okay. Have a great day, Mona. Bye, Mona. Have a great day. So are there any thoughts, any questions, any suggestions? Yeah, if, I don't know what, what all of you are thinking, like um, whether you feel that this is something that you can do or you can't do, or if you have any um, questions around it, or if you have any, um, any kind of feelings around, around doing this work that, that you'd want to talk about. Hi, Shilpi. Uh, hello, everyone. Hi, Shilpi. This is Falguni. Thank you for sharing your um, uh, information and uh, the way you feel with all of us. Um, and thank you, Tara and Shilpi, for organizing this. My personal thing is, um, I think four or five years ago, somebody had told me to visualize things that, you know, I'm lying down, it's dark, I'm lying down, and then there's a light, and I start walking towards that light, just to visualize that I'm walking fine, and to meditate. But it has been so difficult. I tried for a few days, I would say, but then I gave up. And then when I read about you are going to do this, uh, huddle and I'm like oh I you know I completely forgot over the years I completely forgot about that that you know somebody had told me this and now that you are saying it reminds me that yes somebody had told me the exact same thing to do I forgot whom she was referring to and I did not go on the net and search all that but now that you are saying it again it made me think that I should redo it I could not meditate it just I could not so. Yeah, it's, it's hard to meditate because it brings, so what, what Joe Dispenza says is that your, uh, the act of meditation is the act of, of really um, getting to know yourself and that can be really scary because we don't know ourselves and we're right. just living in, in sort of these default mode networks where we're just, life is taking us along and we're just living that life without without sort of being conscious observers of our lives, as Tala was saying. And um, so basically like we're living in these like automatic, like 95% of what we do is just automatic, right? We're not True. thinking about it. These are just thoughts popping up. Uh, these are just reactions we're having. These are feelings we're feeling. And, and we think that there's nothing we can do to control it. Uh, but that's where the magic is because actually we have 100% ability to change how we feel uh, about every single thing in our life. Every single thing uh, can be, how we feel about it can be changed. So for instance, even like I had this really terrible fear of lizards and because of that, I didn't like to stay on my own. And now like I'm on my own and I'm seeing the lizards and I don't feel, I don't feel that fear. Like, I don't know, it's I don't feel that. Like, wow. uh, so, so, um, um, so, so what he says is that uh, when you start to meditate, your body is going to rebel because it's used to being a certain way for so many years. It's used to being in control of you, your emotions, your thoughts. And it feels this is what is the right thing because you're in survival. And this is what, you know, this is what you need to do to stay safe. Um, but now you have to, 
by you i mean sort of your soul or your the deeper right. part of you has to kind of tell your body no i am the boss and i will tell you what you think and what you feel because i will decide that it's not going to be you that decides that it's going to be me that decides that and i can see i can i ha- can have control i can exercise control over that so the initial feelings of discomfort even i still have those feelings uh when there are days when i just don't want to meditate and i know it's my body like rebelling right it's saying i don't i don't want to go here this is an unknown space for me uh i don't think it's safe for me it's your your default no- mode network kicking in um and and you need to basically um you know climb that mountain get over that to the other side because the other side is really beautiful but it's very hard to for most people to to cross to cross uh, but correct yeah but what he says is you put your foot in the stream and then don't look back just keep walking just keep doing the meditations like even if you can't get through more than 5 minutes just keep sitting through 5 minutes every day until you can get to 10 15 20 and slowly build it up but kind of you need to you need to just keep going every day i don't yeah, know so that was my next question to you so when you started and initially how long could you meditate so Five i used to minutes. i i used to do this yoga nidra meditation before i started yoga spenza so um okay. and those were like the lying meditations which are really nice you can just sleep and it's like a lot of fun um but i could do like I did the full meditation like right from what go my mind would go in and out and I would mm-hmm. have to be like you know I'm thinking and then uh I'm also going through this phase where I fall asleep in the meditations even though I'm sitting even though I'm walking I'm practically half asleep in some of them um because your mind is so the is so slow down that you're like so you know it's okay to fall asleep it's okay to think other things it's okay to to want when your body is like kicking and stre- screaming and saying this is not right for you you want a party you want to take care of your kids you want to have your career you want to live your life and you need to sit yourself sit yourself down and be like no i this is my vision i i i believe in it i believe i can heal myself uh, i just need to sit here uh, and every time my body rebels i need to assert control over it and ultimately your body kind of gives in is what joe dispenza says my body is still not giving in fully but i still have the benefits of it so um yeah i don't know tala you want to add well when i first started meditating at first i only could do like 20 minutes and this was a long time ago this was like almost 20 years ago i started So over the years I haven't gone to a whole hour yet Chilpi so I'm amazed that d- you doing an hour I have gone I to do an, hour. an hour I do an hour 40 minutes as as well um that's so, impressive but it's I mean I do I don't say I'm 100% in all the time and yeah. for me the, the bigger problem is that i'm falling asleep like i'm still trying to get over that like i'm falling asleep um but um i'll send you a shorter uh youtube like i really like this one uh and it's easy one to start with um and yeah it's still 20 minutes but i would say falguni that um this is a, one that you can relate to cuz it's about loving yourself as a woman Okay. Um so maybe try try this one that I've sent um it yeah. really for me it was really a sweet meditation to do and I just listen to it when I'm in the shower or you know doing other things because I have I do the longer meditations um but like I just have it on whenever I'm feeling like my like I'm not as inspired or as loving of myself in that moment then I I put this and uh if i play it like two three times then i feel completely different like even oh, though yes. it it just i don't know because now, now i can tell when my, when i'm see my my heart feels like it's not fully there like uh and when it's feeling nervous or like automatically like my brain is adjusted and it's conscious enough to tell me that you know you're not fully there today so you need to like get there um so that's also a good thing like 
I've become quite conscious of all my thoughts and feelings. I'll definitely look yeah, at that link that you had sent. It, it's like when you start doing it and you do it over time, there are new, new neural networks and connection created in the brain. So you're gonna you're gonna see some diff. You're gonna see difference. You're gonna feel it. You're gonna know it. You know. Okay. Yeah, we all... Oh, sorry. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Hi, um, I'm Bob Turner, and I live on the East Coast uh, in, here in the States. And um, Tara, it's very nice to meet you. I, it's my, I think maybe my second time that I've actually joined one of the huddles. And Shelby, thank you so much um, for you know providing this information. Um, I, I'm, I'll try to give you a very short bio of me. In <laughs> very short, in 2001, uh, I was misdiagnosed with charcomery tooth because I had foot drop on one of my me legs. Too. Me too. You, I was you also as well? misdiagnosed with CMT. Yeah. Yeah. But so no, I, I went to. So I went Sorry. to the best my I went to my GP and he said um I said I've been I've been tripping but not the good kind at work but much like you all I haven't done drugs so I don't know what that means but so I was tripping down the hallway at work so he said okay um come up on your toes and I was able to do that and then he said rock back on your heels and he said rock back I'm like um he's like how long have you been like this i'm like i don't know it just you know i wanted to say since i was born but it had honestly just begun happening so i'll speed that up to say that he said i'm going to um i'll be right back and he left the room and he left me by myself i'm like oh my gosh i have yellow fever and i'm going to die or something so then he came back in and said i'm going to send you to the best neurologist in the state of delaware which is where i live so i went and that's where she'll be i got the cmt diagnosis after an emg study which was very interesting i had never had had that done before so fast forward to 2017 and i went to the university of pennsylvania and had my genes sequenced so i have um one half i have the gne gene mutation but i also which i don't understand um the pmok um variation as well but I don't present like that. I present like GNE. So I'm getting uh, weaker in my legs. Uh, I can still walk. I wear um, not molded, not the plastic, but the um, carbon fiber braces now. So I'm able to flop around in the house and you know fall into things, um, which is fine. Um, so all that to say, that's my background, Shelby. What's challenging for me, and, and I believe Mona mentioned it about Western medicine, it, it's all about, and I've, I've done some Googling just now um, on uh, Joe Dispenza as well. There are many critics. Uh, the one thing for me, Shelby, is it, uh, the thought of that your thoughts can change your DNA. And I don't know if that's truly, and I, and I only saw that on the internet and everything's true on the internet, so it has to be true, right? So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> The hard thing for me, I, I very much understand the mental versus the physical, and truly, I don't believe they're separate. I, I really don't. I believe one does affect the other. I guess it's, um, it's, and you keep mentioning it, it's what you take away. Um, so for instance, um, a neighbor has helped my wife and I with Qigong, for instance. I find that to be helpful, uh, you know, for myself. So I, I very much enjoy listening to yourself and everyone else as well. And I truly do believe it, it just comes down to what resonates for you. The skeptic on in me, the black hat <laughs> still wants to say, mm, I don't know about this. However, the proof is in, you know, the proof is the proof. If you feel better, if you move better, it's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. So for me, she'll be just, and I apologize all that this has been a little too long, but that's where, that's how I react when I listen, you know, to you, because I'm listening for those things of what is it that's helping you? And well, what can I, how can I do that as well? Yeah, I, I totally understand. And me, I was skeptical too, that, you know, can it really change your DNA? Yeah. Um, and uh, so th that's like the, that's why that's the way I rationalize it is that it can change the way you express your DNA, maybe. Yeah. I, like, yeah. Uh, for instance, what I'm understanding from you is that you're, I, I think you're anyway like a slow progressor with DNA. It's been twenty years. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. um, 
because I it's been less than 15 and I'm working with a walker so oh, okay. um, so uh, so how come people who have the same mutation like even siblings have different um, uh, oh, yeah. different phenotypes of this disease so there's a lot about this disease that we don't understand Right. And uh, and the way that I initially was rationalizing it was that I'm going to try and get my stem cells to start growing on my own oh, and yeah. uh, and grow muscles that way. But now I don't now I've reached the point where I don't care because I'm just feeling so awesome <laughs> that and I've, sure. I've surrendered yeah. to the process. And it's sure. just but in the, in the beginning, I was trying to like, OK, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to think about it with my thoughts and that will change. Um, but that's not actually what it is. It's about who you're being in the sense yes. that um, yes. are you being the person um, that is unlimited, is absolutely mm -hmm. able to do anything that they want to do. And if you're being that person, then um, you know it doesn't matter what's happening in your life because you're feeling it. You're feeling, right. um, you're, you're living from that sense of like, you know, I can do anything and then it doesn't sure. matter. But initially I did try to rationalize it in a lot of different ways. <laughs> like, okay, I'm going to get my stem cells to start growing faster because, you know, right. there's now some research coming out that our, um, uh, in GNE, the, the, the muscle breakdown is slower. So if you can like increase your stem cell growth, okay. um, then sort of, um, you know, because your muscles kind of break down slower than say DMD or other muscular dystrophies, then, mm -hmm. um, you know, you might be able to kind of manage the progression because mm -hmm. you'll be maybe building muscle. I don't know. Like, right. there's just sure. initial, but just to sure. say that we don't know so much about the way our body works that, right. Very true. um, that, um, you know, there's so much of the bio biology that we just don't understand are there other ways that if we have a mutation that we can get our muscles back on track because they could be right there's so yeah. much going on in our in our body that uh we just have to get out of the way and let let the the infinite intelligence of the body kind of play out it's and, amazing and how it heals itself <laughs> how it can heal it how it does heal in the ways we see it heal itself you cut yourself and it heals how does that happen I, you know. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Sarah, do you want to add? Well, um, I can't think of this guy's name, but I think it was in the 80s or 70s. He used um, comedy and laughing therapy to heal himself. Oh, um, uh, there, um, there was a movie made. Um, um, Oh, Robin Williams was played a doctor that, or, or is that what you're speaking of, Tara? The doctor that yeah, uses I, humor. Yeah, I don't know about the movie, but the books he had written yeah. quite a few books, and it's our thoughts, our feelings create so many different chemicals within our mm. brain, right? Yeah. Right. And right. and the and the cells in our body as well. Right, right. And Chilpi talked earlier about all the scientific research. Yeah. So when you think of that, our thoughts, our feeling, we are a whole individual, right? right. Everything we think, Very we're agree. doing, our thoughts, our actions, all yeah. affect us at some level. Very much. Affects the cells, the way the cells are duplicating or going to create yeah. cancer and this and that and the other. And um, yeah. so when we look at ourselves, as everything is connected and we're connected to yes. the world. We're not just, you know, mm -hmm. this person. We're part of that ocean. If you yeah. dip a cup of water from the ocean, the, the, the water is molded in that cup. Mm -hmm. Think of yourself as that cup of water. Yeah. And when you pour that cup of water back in the ocean, what do you become? You merged with this ocean. Yeah. So that also brings us to this whole quantum field and the infinite yeah. possibilities we have. I just don't know how to put it in scientific terms and right. analytical terms. But, you know, when you feel it and you bring it into practice, it really makes a difference. 
And I also noticed, Shilpa, that in, um, ter- uh, in Googling while, Shilpa, you were speaking, I actually own the book, What the Bleep Do We Know, which um, mentions, uh, which I haven't read it, it. And the woman who was teaching us Qigong was the one who suggested that to me. Um, I haven't read it in about 10 years, but now I need to go back and pull it out of my library. And, that, and yeah, that's a good book. And that's, uh, I don't know if you have the DVD or you could get it online. Just the book. <clears throat> yeah. And also The Secret was one of them as uh, well. I've never read The Secret, but I know of it. Yeah. yeah. There's also like, um, just to add, I, while, while I was speaking, I realized, so I went through uh, what's called a coherence healing session, uh, mm. on, which which is available on Joe Dispenza's website, where uh, Joe Dispenza followers, they um, they heal you remotely, like on a Zoom call. Oh. And um, what happened, I just wanted to try it. So, sure. um, so, you know, I got on the Zoom call with people I never knew. And of course, I didn't like heal myself from GNE, but around half an hour before the call was going to start, they were just this feeling of like love that that's when i understood what 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 love is because that was the day i understood what love is because it was coming to me from somewhere i don't know where and i was just sitting there and i was crying like for one hour like i don't sure. know it was i i and they weren't there like and it's <laughs> they were, that was the first time something like this ever happened to me and that really yeah. like really helped me to understand sort of that energy in you yes. and is all around you. And it can come to you Agreed. from people you haven't even met who are just mm-hmm. on a Zoom call with you. And they, and they weren't even on that call with me when it started. Mm-hmm. Like I just felt it. And it was such a strong feeling like of being loved. And I realized that I have to love myself in this way because if someone else can love me like this and if why I can feel this love, yeah, why can't I love yeah. myself in this way? And that's when I, I really understood that like the key to healing is love because these people were healing me by just <laughs> sending me their love. Yeah, um, that's awesome. And yeah, it was really like, it was it was really like a, a moment. Like, sure. And, and, may, and maybe that's also something that people can try as the coherence healing, but I would yeah. not suggest to try it off the bat because you need to like get into the work a little bit for it to be like useful. Right. Um, Right. But it just told me like that this work is, is like just for the skeptical part of me, I was like, oh, wow, like this can happen. Like Absolutely. I, I wasn't, I wasn't, I never thought it would happen like this. Right. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you for allowing me to share my story as well. Thank you. Yeah, well, thank I, think, you I think it's very like genuine to have these questions. And I know there's a lot of like skepticism even around Dr. Joe um and or around a lot of these people um so i think that's a that's a good question great thank you thank you both huh? B- bina do you have a question uh i don't i'm not a question but just something i experienced and um what it is was you know i had uh, uh stage one cancer in november 20 i was diagnosed and then i had surgery and um, a hysterectomy and all that. But thank God that it hadn't spread. I didn't need further treatment. But before the surgery, one of my um, nieces, uh, my first cousin sister's daughter, she does distance healing and healing. So she sort of did healing with me, but from distance. And obviously, I know everything exists for, there is all these different, different things in the world. You know, like, because obviously from India, we have the yoga, Ayurveda, and you have all this meditation, all the things, and being Jain, you know, we know about meditation, all that. But um, I was open to it. I've always been open to the things. I just never have done it. I'd done meditation once I went to a class, which was like when I was 19, 20, but never took it up. So she did distant healing, and actually, I could feel it. I could, because I was open to it, then she could connect with me. Because if I wasn't open, she wouldn't be able to connect. And I could feel the pain she was taking when she was like preparing me before the operation and like what to do and how to think, my clear my thoughts and stuff like that. And that was in 2020. And I always said that I'm going to continue. I'm going to do things by myself, also read and other things, um, do meditation. But it's just, I've never made the time for it. You know, in spite of being disabled, you always have some chores or something or the other comes along or something always. And 
I think what this is like really telling you is you need to make time for yourself and to sitting up a meditation is time for yourself and also trying to all this burden of living like the daily routine as Shippa was saying you know the daily slog of life you need to remove all this kind of thing and make space and what you like the other lady with Falcon was saying like do what you or I can't remember her but do what you can or if not stop because if you just carry on this way, we're just going to go down here more quickly. And as you experience, it will be that you're feeling so much better and getting to live on your own. And the thoughts about the future for us, which is always on our head. And I think we need to stop that. And, and that really, the healing work. And then my son experienced, uh, he had injured himself and he did healing. And, and like he reads a lot of these books and he's also mom, when you want to take my books and he's been to seminars and stuff like talks, not possibly meditation, but he does all those things. And he's, I've seen such a lot of change in him in the last three, four years for the better, but I haven't taken it on. And I think having heard you, I think I have to stop and I have to look at myself and give myself the time now. So I have to literally, I have to do it because Obviously, in the last three years, I've really, my graph's really, really gone down quite a lot. And I, my symptoms started, my daughter is 28. So it started 23 years ago, but I was only diagnosed with the correct diagnosis in 2018. So obviously, I'm now I'm using a rollator. I used to drive 10 years before. So, but I think this is really, I said, okay, it's time to stop and time to make things for yourself. And, and, and whether it helps you or not, but still it's you you giving that one hour, half an hour, 10 minutes, whatever, every day is to your mind, clearing your mind, clearing the burden of day-to-day -day routine and cleansing yourself from that. You know, I think that would really help. And it, it also it would help, I'm very emotional, so I take on everything. And I think that's where I have to stop because that's, and my son's told me a lot because obviously he's learned a lot himself that you need to stop taking all these emotions on. It's, you know, so yeah. So one meditation and all this kind of thing. Yeah, he, I mean, I just Google it. I mean, he's, his courses are very expensive because he's coming in London, I think in August, but um, yeah. yeah. But you can still read a book and YouTube is there. There's a start. You don't have to do the course, but it starts somewhere. I am. I also thought his course was really expensive, but now I'm dying to go. I just wish he was coming I to India. I would be like, I'm going now. But I like mean, if okay, because I obviously because I haven't worked for this many years, so everything we look at uh, income and all based. But, but my son did that course, which he went in Central London. It was expensive, and but I can see, I was like such a change in him. I mean, he's 32 now, but this is like. I would say about eight years ago, he was completely different. And now he's so grounded. That is just unbelievable. But I've never taken it on to even do a little bit of anything. So now I think having heard how you feel and how it's helped you physically and mentally, I think I have to take the step and at least start reading something and giving a little bit of time. So yeah. That's, I, a, that's a good idea, Bina. Take take the first step, and yeah. you don't have to spend a full hour. Start out with yeah. what yeah, your tolerance is. Yeah, because your mind your mind cannot stay for more than five minutes. It will start wandering. So you have, as you said, which is a good idea. Start five minutes, and you'll realize after they what oh, I can do ten minutes. And so start with slow, small steps. Yeah. Yeah. When I first started, I was making shopping lists in my head, and then I was I, thinking, what I am I going to have for lunch? next and it was you know it was all of that and then later on there are gaps between my thoughts and I'm thinking what happened there and so so you there, there's a process you know it's a growth process there and the other um, thing I did was hit was shopping you know when you said like you were you were in tears like when I had that healing done uh yeah suddenly I don't know why I started um crying and she said it was something to do with this particular um, thing. Did anything happen? You know, like she could pick it up. So it was quite amazing that uh, how, you know, it kind of, I think it would really, even if you don't see anybody, but if you do all these things, it would uh, unblock the channels of the energy, you know, and take the negatives out. 
So, and that would yeah. always help us physically also. Yeah, that's what I understand. Yes, I don't know how it's gonna, it, it may not change. I, I, it's very hard to make science and this together as Bob was saying, but whatever we can do would still help us. It may not change the GNE. You know, I mean, I can't understand how this would help to change the GNE, the muscles and all those things, but it just, it would slow the progression maybe. Cause you are- I, I actually measured- your body healthy. Yeah. So into, but I actually measured my ability to lift the weights. And so I actually did that measurement and my ability to lift a weight actually increased um, like, like a 1.5 kg weight. I couldn't lift it like with my arms straight. And, and in a few months I could. So I actually measured it. So it was like actually like scientific change. And, um, but like it's, it's not possible without the physical exercises as well. I would say you have to keep those going yes. as well. But I really believe that you can heal yourself. Like you can become stronger. Um, and I'm like, I see that every day. Like it's not going to be fast. It's going to be the way your progression, like, at least with me, it's been the way my progression has been, right? So like a little bit, a little bit every year, like little, but it's, it's increasing. Like, you know, things that I needed to hold on to something to do earlier, I can do without holding on. And that was exactly how my progression the other way was, right? So first, you know, I could do something that I needed to hold on to something and then I couldn't do it. So now it's the other way. Now, you know, uh, something that I needed to hold on to to do, now I can do without holding on. Um, so yeah, it's, the, it's the positive things. Because as I said, you know, as I said, my son's, you know, every time he comes up because he's moved out this last year, is that's it, it's a positive environment. It's, you know, remove the negative environment and it will just help. So I've listened to him every day. I've been over each but I haven't taken it on to do. So now I've got to, have, I've got the push. <laughs> I mean, I mean, he's helped with me with the diet has really been amazing. Because as I said, 2018, I got everything, the darkness of GE and my um, cancer and all those things. So that's when I changed everything. So one of the, Thing was food with food and he helped me with that because of his what he was experiencing and so um yeah so thank you thank you Shopi, for Shopi, bringing... i have a question um when you are lifting the 1.5 kilo are you like having this focused you're focusing your thought that you will be able to pick it up and lift it up or how does that, what's the process? No, I was just testing whether my muscle strength is actually going up or not. So I just I had like a 1.5 kg dumbbell and I just thought that I will see like in a few months, does this get better? Like my ability to lift. So earlier, like I could only lift like till here. I couldn't like lift all the way. But then later mm. on, I could like just a regular lift, like nothing special about that lift. Um, but I was doing some visualizations like at that time, which I've stopped doing now because I just don't have that kind of time to do everything. But I think the visualizations were also very helpful, Tara. Like we didn't talk about that, but I, I really think they helped me. But um, after a point, I kind of, I don't know why I stopped doing the visualizations. Yeah, uh, should, should be, I don't know if you remember, I met you uh, the first year of lockdown when uh, there was this person who was doing yoga from Europe somewhere. And then the next session, it was just the three of us and then we didn't go ahead with the session. But his first session, it was the first time I could come across anything on uh, internet. Until then I was, I felt like I was alone with Jenny and there was nobody else in the world. It was the first time I ever came across anybody. And then he was talking about in the yoga about the, the legs and he said, visualize it's moving, visualize. And in the end, it will move. Even if it's a tiny bit, you will get there. So just do that visualization uh, when you're sitting out to do maybe yoga, or whatever, sitting down to do exercise, even though you can't do it. So that's basically you're just proving it yeah. in a way. Yeah, yeah, that's who I got the idea from. But I actually then decided that I would sit every night for like 30 minutes and just do visualizations. So I do visualizations along with my yoga as well, but they're less effective. Like when you sit for 30 minutes and you visualize an exercise. So like uh, I visualize my tricep, my bicep, my hips, uh, my, uh, uh, my um, what's the, 
and a couple of other muscles and um, doing the exercises like and by visualize I mean like you can actually feel the muscle in motion like um, so you feel like your muscle has actually had a workout even though you've not moved any muscle in your body and when you feel like that then I yeah, it really did like those those are the parts of my body that are actually getting stronger is what I'm feeling um, so so I think those are also like so I would sit for 30 minutes five minutes for each muscle like uh, um, bicep tricep and etc so five minutes like practicing doing the exercise but like by the end of those five minutes you should feel as if you your muscle has had a good workout and, and when you feel like that, you know you've done it correctly. And that really helped me, I think. Yeah. Mm. So, no, but yeah, thank you anyways to bring this forward to the topic. Thank you. I think Manali has a question. Yes, I was asking about the healing. Like, was it Reiki or access bar something? Manali, are you asking me or Bina? Yes, yes, Shilpi, I'm asking you. Mine was, it's called a coherence healing. Um, it's just a group of people. It's, it's not, I don't know what access bar is, but it's not Reiki. Uh, it's, okay, okay. It's called co coherence healing. Um, okay. Because Joe Dispenza has this concept of like, you can heal from, in, from being in the field. And the field is like where, there, where is the quantum field where there is nobody, no, no map, there's nothing, where, where basically there's no time, where everything is conflated. And, um, and from there, basically, you can, wh when you're in the field, then you can heal. So that's basically what the coherence healing is. When basically, um, you know, these people reach that state of coherence and then. Uh, they send you the energy through the field um, when they are in those foreign states. Um, yeah. Yeah, I got it. Maybe, maybe Shilpi, you could send me some of the um, links and when we uh, put the recording out, we could add it to to the recording so and send it out to everyone which links do you think would be most helpful tara this like, is so much information out there maybe um like the starting the first uh what you would suggest the first meditation for people starting out okay. that one well, maybe some of the books um maybe we could say you know, on YouTube, there's some free YouTube videos. Yeah, and that's why I agree. Taking the first step towards meditation, that's something that can be helpful for all of us. So yeah. I, I also think on his website, um, he says sort of for beginners what to do. He has like a, a, a an FAQ there. So maybe that can be sent. Let me see if I can um, maybe... Because a lot in, in the groups, in the Georgia Spencer groups, a lot of people ask where to start from. And that's basically what people tell them uh, okay. is to start from. Um, so I'll put that link there. I don't know what he says in that link, but I'll check it out and I'll put it. Because I also feel a little bit like I'm not an expert. I'm, uh, I don't know what would work for you guys. Uh, because everyone right. has a different way of approaching it. I think you just have to take the plunge somewhere. Like, um, and I don't know what the best place is, but maybe it's a book, like maybe that's the best place. There's also like a, a series called Rewired on Gaia that he does, where I, I believe that's also a good one. Um, and like on, on the groups, they say when, so Gaia is like a paid channel, but some of those videos become unlocked for a short period of time. Um, so maybe if you have like a group of people who are interested in this information, then when those videos get unlocked, I can share it um, with everyone. Are there any other questions, suggestions or 
comments? Yeah, I don't know how you guys are feeling about this. Very helpful, very helpful. Definitely very helpful, yeah. And, and I just want to add that um, Dr. Sepide will, um, will be ta talking more on this as well, Shilpi. Oh. Um, she went, uh, she's also a GNEM patient, and she went to the um, retreat in San Diego recently. Oh, she did. So I'm, I'm talking with her and see when we could schedule uh, an another session. So That's wonderful. Yeah. So we'll have someone who physically went to um, the retreat. Wow. I heard those are amazing. Yeah. It was very difficult for her to get a ticket, uh, um, she mentioned. Yeah, it's very, so, I think you have to like, uh, like be online when the moment the ticket opens and then those get, they get sold out within seconds. Yeah. So what is this, what is this retreat about? So these are like, it's, it's, uh, no, go ahead. Uh, Oh, no, no, go ahead, because you know, you know more, Shilpi. So, uh, so he organizes these in-person events, and I think um, Dr. Sepede went to like an advanced workshop, which is like a seven-day workshop, where uh, over a period of seven days, you basically um, um, do a number of different meditations. And he also explains concepts to you and there are coherence healing sessions and there are a lot of different things happening. And a lot of people have their healing in those seven days because those seven days are like transformational um, because basically you're meditating, I think, 10 to 12 hours a day in those seven days. Um, right. and, and those are like, um, I've heard they're just, and because everyone around you has that energy of like, wanting to have this and wanting to do this and being pumped and being like really into it so that you feed off that energy and that also really like um kind of i think speeds up the healing is what i've heard interesting but he does like shorter events as well like a weekend event which is called the progressive workshop and uh, yeah, so he, he, but, the, but the biggest breakthroughs generally happen in the seven day advanced workshops. Okay. Sarah, do you wanna add? No, not really. Um, I, haven't, I have not been to his workshop. Uh, I've listened to his meditation, his talks. I read Evolve Your Brain. Uh, so I would like to go to one of his workshops. Yeah. I mean, if, you, if you could picture yourself, what she'll be talking about the ener energy when everybody's at this um, retreat, everyone is thinking about healing. And so that energy is so pervasive that you can't help but absorb some of that. I don't know if any of you have entered a room and there was like a, a quarrel or a dispute or a disagreement and you could feel that energy when you have entered it and you know there's something not right. So when you go to these workshops, you feel that positive energy and you absorb that and it helps, it helps. I've been to um, Amaji, Amaji's um, workshop, you know, the um, Amma, I don't know if any of you know Amma from uh, South India. She travels. That she the, comes to the hugging. The hugging Amma. Yeah. Oh my I've goodness. I've heard about her. She gave me a hug. Two two years, and I I can't explain. There are no words to explain some of these things because it's not coming from our thoughts. It's from a different level, and her hug was. So, 
it was love that I felt that I carried. It, it was like I could still feel that hug up till today when I talk about it. Yeah. And so it's that kind of feeling you get when you go to these uh, workshop and everyone is thinking these thoughts, these positive thoughts and wanting to heal. You get caught up in that matrix as well. Also, a so, lot of people have those moments in these workshops where they're what they call popping, where they're popping, where, you know, their body goes into convulsions or like really strong energy flows. And that's happening like all around you all the time, apparently. Uh, people start laughing or crying or like shouting. And there's like a lot of energy, like a lot. I think the bottom line is whatever you do, you just have to keep an open mind about it. Then that will affect your body or your thoughts or something. If you have, if you are being doubtful or suspecting something that, oh, it might work, it might not work, then things will not work for you. You have also, to believe in what you do. Yeah, but also with this work, what I've seen is that I've had the best meditations when I've really like gone in 100%. Like I am going to like give it, everything i'm gonna i'm not just sitting and doing something i am like i have a very very strong intention of what i want from this meditation and when and i'm really driven and i'm really motivated and that's when i have like really good meditations yeah exactly And I, I know that's hard to like be that motivated, that inspired, like, okay, I'm going to, you know, this meditation is going to be the one or like where I'm going to give it my all. Um, but that's like, I, like I, that's what he said. Like you, it's not a passive, like Joe, Joe Dispenza's meditations are not passive. You have to be like very actively participating um, in terms of like how much you're giving of yourself to that uh, process, I think. Right. So that's the whole Would point. You still show me... Sorry. Okay. No, go ahead, Tara. No, I was just saying that's the whole point. So if I speak about myself, as I said, in the past, I tried meditating, but I'm not the kind of person who can I mean, and that's what I thought that I cannot meditate because I cannot concentrate on one thing. When I start meditating, I'm like, oh, I have to do the laundry. Oh, I have to do this core, that core or whatever. And then finally I gave up and it never, I'd never took it up. Now that I'm listening to you, Shilpi and Tara, I'm like, okay, maybe I should give another try now. Yeah, I think Self-love self is very important. And if you don't put yourself first, who will, right? True. Allotting a certain time, you know, that you think you can allot to yourself, tune out from social media, telephone, turn off the telephone. Um, maybe the get into part. Yeah, get into the room. <laughs> Uh, put do not disturb and sit maybe even for five minutes start off just right. sit have no expectation at first that's how I started it uh, it was but, when my but, kids were growing up and I had teenagers in the house wanting this that and the other and then I would tell them I'm on time out so I would put them on time out when they misbehave. So then they understood that I was on time out. They can't disturb me. That's how I started out. Yeah, I think the time doesn't matter. It's, it's how you do it. Like, so even if you do five minutes, but you're really into it and you're really, uh, um, you're inspired to create something with your life. And that's, why you're sitting for those five minutes, I think that's more important than the time that you spend 
uh, in the meditation. Sure. I should start now. Thank you so much for mm -hmm. all the motivation. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Falguni. Well, you know you can reach Shilpi if you have questions. Yes, definitely. Thank you. Yeah. Well, if there are no other questions and comments, we will bring the session to a close. And it's, it has been very enlightening. And I've learned from you, Shilpi, Thank you. I might pick your brains a little more afterwards. And thank you for volunteering and sharing your knowledge with us. And thank everyone for being here today. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tara. And like I always learn from you. And it was great. It's also been helpful, really helpful to me to just um, share. Um, because as I said, sort of, this is not like a passive journey. And, you know, sometimes you need to like, just to keep yourself inspired, you need to kind of, I, I should have journaled, like, but I didn't journal because just the time, right? So I was just, um, because I didn't journal, at least this gave me an opportunity to go back and think through some of like my journey. And that was really nice. It was nice to have that opportunity. Yeah. That would have been good to have a journal and then you could see your progression, right? How you progress. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you everyone and have a blessed time, day, evening. And uh, we'll see you again. Thank you.